Ukraine's capital region was struck by Iranian-made kamikaze drones early on Thursday, the official said, sending rescue workers rushing to the scene as the residents awoke to air raid sirens for the fourth consecutive morning following Russia's major assault across the country earlier this week. Kyiv Regional Governor Oleksiy Kuleba said that the strikes occurred in the area around the capital. It wasn't yet clear if there were any casualties in those attacks, but Ukrainian officials said that 13 people were killed and 37 wounded over the past 24 hours in the Russian strikes throughout the country. Deputy Head of the Presidential Office Kirilo Temoshenko said on Telegram that critical infrastructure facilities in the area were hit without offering any details on which ones. Rockets have landed near the Iraqi capital's green zone, home to the government buildings and foreign missions, according to a military statement, as a controversial parliament session was about to begin to elect the country's new president. Several civilians and members of the security forces were wounded in Thursday's attack, Al Jazeera reported from Baghdad. The report further added that the preliminary information suggests that at least nine rockets landed in and around the fortified areas as the parliament was about to begin its session, which has been boycotted by members of the parliament affiliated with powerful Shia leader Muqtada al-Sadr. Quorum was reached to hold the session in the afternoon with at least 269 lawmakers of the 329 attending the session. One rocket landed in proximity of a mosque in the Alavi neighborhood near the Green Zone. The admission of Ukraine to NATO could result in a third world war, the Deputy Secretary of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Alexander Venediktov, told the state task news agency in an interview. Kyiv is well aware that such a step would mean a guaranteed escalation to a World War III, task cited Venediktov is saying. Apparently, that's what they're counting on, to create informational noise and draw attention to themselves once again. Venediktov also repeated the Russian position that the West, by helping Ukraine, indicated that they are a direct party to the conflict. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced a surprise bid for fast-track membership of the NATO military alliance at the end of September after President Vladimir Putin held a ceremony in Moscow to proclaim the four partially occupied regions as annexed Russian land. Dubai recently witnessed the futuristic technology of flying cars with the Chinese manufacturer making its first public flight in the United Arab Emirates. According to Khalish Times, Chinese technology and electric vehicle manufacturer Zipeng tested the world's first flying electric taxi on Monday. The Zipeng X2, developed by the Guangzhou based Zipeng Inc.'s aviation affiliate, is one of dozens of flying car projects around the world. Only a handful have been successfully tested with passengers on board, and it will likely be many years before any are put into service. This demonstration was held with an empty cockpit, but the company says that it carried out a manned flight test in July 2021. After taking off from Skydive Dubai, the X2 flying car completed its test flight, ushering in a brand new thrilling era of short haul trips and intelligent mobility solutions.